from Anchored in Faith Gospel Church in Oxford, Iowa. This is Anchored in Faith. My Jesus. Oh, the world don't have nothing on us. We can, we can dance and we can praise and we can get high in the Holy Ghost. We can get drunk in the Holy Ghost. They have, how, I just tell people, I just tell people, I just, I still dance, but I just changed partners. Woo! I changed partners. Hallelujah. 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 Woo, hallelujah. My dance changed. My step changed. My movement changed. My action. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, new shout. I shout anyway, I dance. I dance. Hallelujah. I don't know about, about you, but I've got a lot to shout and dance about. He's done a lot in my life. Hallelujah. He's brought me a firm peace. Woo, from where he got me out the gutter, got me out the gutter, set my feet on something. on me. He's not finished yet. <laughs> He's still working on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This flesh is not saved. Only our spirit. So we, it's, it's a big battle out there. A big battle. Every day I got to battle the stinking flesh. I'll be glad one of these days when I lay it down. Put my glorified body on. Woo! No sin. No sickness. No disease. Hallelujah. No devil. Woo! I, I can't, I can't wait. Right. Hallelujah. But in the meanwhile, while we're on this earth, <laughs> Lord, I just thank you for the, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Yahweh Father. Thank you for your spirit. It's so sweet in here. The spirit's so sweet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we take communion this morning. Everybody should have their mind ready now to receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And when Jesus, when he took bread and he given thanks, he says, take, eat of this. This represents my body. Broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. We do this. Remembering. Remembering people. What he did on the cross. Don't take it without knowing what you're doing here. Because it says, you read on down, it says a lot of all the, uh, saints are sick and already asleep. They died because they didn't honor this and know what they were doing so make sure you know what you're doing so we take this remembering what you've done broke your body broken for us hallelujah then after the same manner he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood in his blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me remembrance what he's done for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show Yahweh's death until he comes uh, our Lord which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth wherever so ever you eat this bread and drink this cup of Yahshua Messiah unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood as that means you take it, just say, well, I'm just going to take it. It's just a tradition, you know, our family do. No, we don't do that. We've got to know what he did. That's why we let every man examine himself and let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. Examine yourself. He says, because the many are weak, who doesn't discern Yeshua Messiah's body, they are weak and are sickly among you. And what does this 
What does this do? Remember, you got to remember what, what this represents. Since this, Jesus disarmed all principalities and powers of Satan. He disarmed. Now, people been in the military, don't, they know what disarmed mean. He took away the keys of death and hell. He took away his power. He has no power unless you give it to him. The body of Christ, they're born to people, born again people that's talking about. Now we're talking about born again people. He has no dominion over you anymore. He has no, no, we're no longer a slave. No longer a slave to the devil's devices. And many he's got plenty out there. We were slaves. Before we came to Yeshua, he was, we were slaves. We didn't think so. When I left home, I thought, oh, man, I'm on my own. I can do what I want to do and blah, blah, blah. Nobody's going to tell me what to do now and blah, 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 blah. I didn't know. I was, the devil's right there directing my path. But I thought I was doing it on my own. No, the devil's right there. His sacrifice, his life, and shed his blood so we could be redeemed from all. A-L-L, all sin, iniquities, and all curses, and strongholds of the enemy. All, A-L-L. Hallelujah. The, the, the Bible says what, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We can loose ourselves, our family, from all strongholds, sickness, disease, and addiction. We can do it, people. We can do it. We have the, we got power and authority. There's difference in the word power and authority, okay? They're not the same. This, take for example the, a policeman. He has authority by his badge. The town gave him his badge. He has authority to stop traffic, stop crime. But his power is in what? His gun. That's where his power is. And we got authority and power. We got authority in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We can use that name. That is our authority. He gave it to us to stop the enemy. Hey, get away from me. And we have the power of what? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So use those two. Authority and power. Know the difference of them. You know, I started having pain in my body. And what would the doctor tell me? Well, you're just getting old. <laughs> you just have to, you know, you're going to have this and you're going to have that and this is going to come on you and blah, blah, blah. He's telling me, you know, how older we get. And I thought about it. I says, he's a lying devil. <laughs> That's a lie from the pits of hell. Then my say by his stripes we are healed except when you get old right except we get old then it's all off you just have to suffer with all these diseases and you know arthritis and uh, high blood pressure and uh, diabetes and blah 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 what's going on I said you're lying you lying now we need to take care of our bodies okay now, I had to do some changing in my eating and get some exercise to overcome this by the blood and the prayer I laid hands on me, but I had to do something first, okay? You have to take care of the body, and then he will take care of you. You can't be going out here eating all this stuff. Well, I love potato chips and sweets, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we all have. I had to cut a lot. I had to cut that out. You know, you had, and I had to lose weight. And when I did, my body straightened up. Now, I still need to lose weight, but I, I lost enough where it straightened up my problems. And I thought, you lying devil. And I laid hands on me, and I said, you're not coming on me. Now, I was sinning. And when you sin, all, you know, it's off. You can't sin, think you're going to do all this and still be, you know, be healed. No, he says, this is a temple of the Holy Spirit, he says. You take care of this body. You take care of it. So I had to, I had to change, but I, I lay hands on my body, my, wherever I have pain or anything, and I say, you get out. I'm not, 
We're not in that under Satan anymore. We're not under that curse. We're in the Father. When we got saved, we were taken out of that curse and we were taken into, spiritually into heaven. And we're in heaven with Jesus. Jesus is in us. We are in him. There's none of these diseases in Jesus. Right? So I just, <laughs> I, th I thought, man. So I don't think because we're getting older, we have to suffer with all these things. My Bible didn't tell me he didn't. He healed me. So I'm just saying, people, I can't okay, believe it. You got to believe it. That's true. You got to believe what this word, first you got to know it. First you got to know the word. Then you got to believe the word. Then you got to have faith in the word. That it's true. Or that devil's going to whip your rear end. I'm telling you. He's going to whip it. If you don't know it. And the church is not teaching this. And I teach my people here. You have authority and power. And use it. You start feeling the pain. You start this and that. You lay your hands on it. And you keep laying your hands on it. And you keep praying that, that demon out there. He's not allowed in my body. I got, I'm the body of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's a pastor, yeah. So he's he's an evangelist and pastor, aren't you? You you can either do both. Okay, so he's down in Davenport. So we're glad to have him, and he know, and he knows the word. And boy, he can get in there and get your brain to think. <laughs> he's he's taught some stuff. I thought, whoa! I, don't, you know, I have to go study that. So Bless come on up and. Uh, Oh, absolutely. Give us the word. Oh. Bless the name of the Lord. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and go into the word. But before we do, we can go ahead and give God a word of prayer. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you on today, God, for everything that our ears have heard. And God, that our eyes have seen. So, God, as we approach your word, we ask you right now that you move man out the way. And that you give the spirit free liberty. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my Savior, my strength and redeemer. So, Lord, we thank you now. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you. If you have your word, your Bible, uh, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Uh, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, uh, when you got it, indicate by saying, I got it. If you don't have it, say, please wait. All right, we all set to go. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1, it gives us this great intelligence. It says, when he was come down, when, when he, Jesus, was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Verse 2, and behold, there came a leper. Worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you will, can you make me clean? Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Jesus said unto him, see, you tell no man, go your way. Show yourself unto the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And behold, a leper came, worship him, saying, Lord, if you will, can you make me clean? Jesus put forth his hand, touched him, saying, I will be clean. Immediately, leprosy was cleansed. Jesus says, see, you tell nobody. Go your way, show yourself to the priest, offer the gift for a testimony unto, unto them. If I had to pin this text, I'd pin it. Things have got to change. Things have got to change. Things have got to have got to change. My brothers and sisters, the grass where the earth and the flower doth fade, but it is the word of our living God that stands forever. So I was sitting at the house, <coughs> sitting at the house on the other week. And I was watching a documentary about someone I really didn't know nothing about until about the end of the documentary. 
<laughs> yeah, I, 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 I was just watching it because it was kind of fascinating. You know, I was watching a documentary about a man who at the age of 65 received his first social security check of $99. Okay. He received his first social security check of $99. Listen, this man was broke. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he was broke. He, they said in the documentary that he owned a small house and he had a little beat up car. But at the age of 65, he made a decision during the documentary that things have got to change. They kept saying that in the documentary that things have got to change. And the decision was made that, that, that let things change. And it's like, listen, I want you to know if you're waiting on me to say something good, I already did. <laughs> I, I, I'm already preaching. You know, he said things have he've got to change. What I come to find out is that people are tired of struggling. Yeah, they're tired of going through what they're going through. And they saying things have got to change. This man said things have got to change. Now, the only thing this man had was a chicken recipe. <laughs> I'm preaching already. Oh had huh, was a chicken recipe y'all pray for me I still got the chicken ministry <laughs> but, 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 but all he had huh, was a uh, was a chicken recipe that's the that's the only thing he had and he said for things to change I got to do something with what I got yeah that lets you know that sometimes for things to change, just use what you got. Just, just use what you got. He had a chicken recipe. He had a chicken recipe that his family and his friends, they really liked it. And he said, you know what? I'm going to change my situation. He left his home of Kentucky. He went state to state trying to sell a chicken recipe. He went in the restaurants and he would tell the owners, listen, I got this good recipe. People really like it and that, and that they could sell it. And all he really wanted was a little percentage of the pieces of chicken that they sold. That's all he wanted. Just give me a, a small percentage of the chicken that they sold. Unfortunately, during the documentary, they said that he was rejected. Uh-huh. Matter of fact, the documentary said that he was rejected over a thousand times. Rejected over there. Listen, can you imagine just being rejected just 20, 30 times? Some of y'all in here, you get rejected once, you throw in the towel. I'm, I'm a, if y'all don't know how I preach, you're going to find out I'm real. Some of us just get rejected one time and we throw the towel in, we forget it. But listen, no matter how many times you have been rejected, you got to continue to be steadfast and unmovable. You got to continue in what it is. This man was rejected over a thousand times, but on his thousand and tenth time, somebody said, yeah. Somebody said, yeah. And that same man who received his first social security check of $99 is well known all throughout the United States as Kentucky Fried Chicken Colonel Sanders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, how many of us in here today is willing to be like Colonel Sanders, though? And say, no matter what happens, no, no matter what comes my way, no matter what, what, what is destined for me, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop knocking on the doors and the windows of opportunity, purpose, and provisions, and, and, and I'm going to keep on pressing rather than quit knocking on the doors because they slammed in my face. Colonel Sanders, my brothers and sisters, would tell you about the game of life and what it would take for things have got to change. Amen. You have to understand that even if you have to keep knocking, don't take no for an answer. Yes. <laughs> you cannot take no for an answer. It doesn't matter what people say. you got to continue to keep on keeping on. When others say you can't, you got to believe that God is saying you can have I got some witnesses in here when others say you won't you got to believe that God said you will 
When others say that God don't know, you don't know how God is going to do it, you just got to trust him when you can't trace him. Amen. Got to trust God when, when, you can't, when you can't trace him. So even if you've experienced rejection in your life, keep on knocking. Why? Because the Bible says if you ask, it shall be given. Amen. If you seek, you'll find. Then he said, if you knock the door. What I like about God, and I'll throw this in for free for you before I move on to my next point, is that God, he sets doors, but he opens windows. That's a, that's a whole nother sermon right there, though. That's a, that's a whole nother sermon. He sets doors, but he opens the windows. That lets you know that you got to be positioned right for him to open. He ain't about to throw out blessings. Out the, he's not going to do that. The Bible said that he'll pour. And you got to be under the window. So listen, no matter what you're faced with, keep on, keep on knocking. No matter what you're faced with, keep on, keep on knocking. Now listen, rejection is one of those subjects that many of us don't like to admit to. Because oftentimes it makes us feel a certain way. Uh-huh. And if you're not careful, my brothers and sisters in Christ, rejection will have you feeling all types of ways. Uh -huh. Rejection causes four distinct psychological wounds. Here they are. Number one, rejection will affect your thinking. Have you, ever, have you ever just been sitting around and you begin thinking about the worst things that ever happened to you? Then next thing you know, you're kind of sad, you're depressed, and you're down on yourself. That's what rejection will do for you. It'll affect your thinking. But not only will it affect your thinking, but rejection will have you angry at yourself. Asking yourself, why is it that this has happened to me? Why is it that people don't want to be bothered with me? How come everybody keeps saying no? It'll affect your thinking. It'll, it'll have you angry at yourself. But rejection will get this eat away at your self-confidence. Am I preaching? Yes, sir. It'll eat away at your self-confidence and your self-esteem. It'll break you down feeling some type of way about yourself. Yes, so, so it'll have you depressed saying, why don't I fit in? I, I want to fit in. Why, why do I feel like I don't belong? Why, do, why don't they like me? How come, I can't just, how come I can't just progress in life? But here's the good news. The good news about the text is, is it's been tailored to teach us that although we may think too much, we may get angry, we may have self-esteem issues and depression, Jesus is in love with restoring the rejected. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No matter what, Jesus is in love with restoring the rejected. That when you have been ejected and when you have been de and when you have been neglected and rejected, God has selected you. <laughs> you got it back there, didn't you? God has selected you. Listen, when you have been ejected, kicked to the curb. <laughs> yeah, let me just bring it down. When you have been dejected, feeling depressed. When you have been neglected, left alone. When you have been rejected, feeling inadequate. God has purposely selected you. He's in love with restoring the rejected. Thanks be to God that he selected you. He selected, he, he, he selected you. Now, before you can go from rejection to being restored, the text is teaching us that all we have to do is find God. <laughs> all we have to do is find God. Now, the man in the text today has leprosy. Now, now you got to understand something about leprosy. Leprosy is not just like your common cold. At that time, it just wasn't like your common cold. You know, it's not like your common day day to day sickness. That's not how leprosy was. In fact, in that day and time, leprosy was so bad that those who became lepers had to be placed on the outskirts of town. Am I in the book? They had to be placed on the outskirts of town. Now, the law of Moses commanded that no one could come in contact with a leper. I'm teaching. Yeah, leprosy was a very terrible and it was a very dreadful disease. And it said that the people who got leprosy, it was a curse from God himself. That's what they say. That was a school of thought then. 
that they that the individuals who got leprosy got it as a curse from God due to the habitual sins that was in that person's life. That's what they said. This young man has leprosy and now he had to move from his mother's house, mother and father's house, to now being placed into a leper colony. Now medicines back then couldn't cure leprosy. They, they couldn't, listen, ibuprofen couldn't do it. Aspirin couldn't, Tylenol. Yeah, you couldn't get rid of leprosy by those. You, you, you just couldn't do it. Not uh, leprosy, they said that if you had contracted leprosy, the only way to get rid of it is to go to the person you got it from. Yeah. That's what they said. Y'all okay. follow me. Not only could one not come in contact with the leper, they couldn't come in contact with you, not your mother, no matter how much she loved you, not your father, no matter how much he cared about you, not your friends and your family. Nobody was allowed to come in contact with the leper. The only person who could come in contact with the leper and touch him was a man of God. The priest. That's the only one. Am I up to speed? You all right? I'm just giving you the backstory here. Now, not only that, but according to Luke chapter 5, this man had gone from having one spot on his body to now being full of spots and sores. Leprosy had completely taken over his body. In other words, get it here. He had to make a decision. And when he was placed in the leper colony, out of all the things that was going on, I just believe, I don't know, but in my sanctified preaching imagination, I just believe he sat in the colony and said, you know what? Things got to change. Stay like this. I, I'm tired of going through this sickness. I'm tired of going through this. Something has got to change. I, 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 something had got to change. Now, on that day, despite of his leprosy, he said, it's got to change. He made, get it here, a decision. He made a decision. And what his decision was is, is I'm about to find God. I got to, for things to change, I got to find God. And the Bible says in verse 1 that when, as Jesus was coming down from the mountain. Now, this man was in the leper colony. He's in the leper colony, but he says to himself, I got to get out of here and find God. And as he walks out of the colony, after he makes it up in his mind that things have got to change, he walks out the colony. As he walks out the colony, it just so happened that Jesus was coming down. Let me get it. All right. Woo. Let's do it again. I said this man made a decision. He made a decision. Things have got to change. After his existential decision, he walks out the colony, and just as he's walking now, Jesus is coming down. Yeah. I'm preaching. I'm trying to hold it. Yeah, Jesus is coming down from the... Listen, let me tell you something, beloved. If you ever want to catch Jesus at the right time, catch him as he's coming down from the mountain. <laughs> Don't catch him in the valley. <laughs> Catch him as he's coming down from the mountain. Yeah, you got to catch him while he's coming down from the mountain. Why is the mountain so important? Here it is. It's on the mountain of Sinai where God revealed his character and his commandments. Uh-huh. It was on Mount Moriah where God provided a ram in the bush. Mm -hmm. It was on Mount Carmel where Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal. Have I got some witnesses here? It was on the Mount of Olives where Jesus taught his disciples. Yeah, it was on the mountain where Jesus was transfigured in the presence of Peter, James, and John. Listen, the best time to catch Jesus is coming from the mountain. Yeah. And listen, I just stopped by to tell you, I came all the way, all the way to Oxford, Iowa to tell somebody that if you need deliverance today, I see Jesus coming from the mountain. Listen, if you need a healing today, I see Jesus coming from the mountain. If you need him to change some situations around, he's coming from the mountain. Yeah, he's coming. 
He's coming from, he's coming from, from the mountain. Here it is. The text says that the leper leaves his colony. This Jesus is coming from the mountain. This colony he leaves, get it here, was a place that confined and constricted him because of the curse of his condition. This place confined and constricted him because of the curse of his condition. This place labeled him and left him out there to die. That's what it did. It labeled him and left him out there to die. But he breaks from it. Let me tell you something. You got to learn how to break out from some places that's trying to confine and constrict you. Yet yeah, sometimes people want to confine and they want to constrict you and they want to label you as a failure. But you must learn how to get up from where you are when they get to talking like that. Go ahead. Get up from where you are. You're not going to do that. You're not going to lower and dampen my spirit. I'm just going to get up and get out. Don't let people confine and constrain you. You, you can't do it. Under, understand something. This man, here it is. When I was reading the text, here's what I found interesting about the text. But the, here it is. This man was put in a leper colony. But he's the only one who made up his mind to leave the colony. What? He around everybody with the same condition. But he's the only one that decided to change it? <laughs> he, he the only one that let me know that some of the folk y'all hanging with, some of the folk y'all kicking it with, everybody that you always seem to want to be around that's always going somewhere but getting nowhere, you need to go ahead and leave them. Listen, if you don't want to go nowhere, why we both ain't got to go nowhere? Nowhere plus nowhere equals nowhere squared. Come on now. He, he the only one made the decision. Huh? He the only one. Made the decision that things have got to change. Second thing is, uh, what I find interesting about the text is huh, this man was so bold. Here's what I mean. This man, according to the law, if he was to leave the colony, mix and mingle with people, he had to do two things. Y'all ready for him? Here's what he had to do. Number one, he had to holler out, unclean, leper, unclean, number one. Number two, he had to wear a sign around his neck that revealed who he was. So get it. He had to holler out, leper, unclean. Unclean leper. Then he had to wear a sign around his neck that said, hey, I'm Mr. Leper. Now, what I like about the text is, is this man did neither one of them. He, he did neither one of them. He was supposed to holler out, wear a sign. He does neither one. Amen. But instead, listen at what he do. He gets lost in the crowd. He gets lost in the crowd. Now, here's the question I got, Mr. Pinsman of the text. How did, how did he go unnoticed? He's full of sores and spots. How did he go unnoticed? He's in the crowd, full of spots and sores, all type of disease over his body, and nobody notices it? How does that happen? How, how does it happen? Here's how. 
<coughs> Y'all ready for it? He kept his mouth shut. <laughs> Let me say it again. <laughs> he kept his mouth shut. Listen, listen, you want to know why you're not experiencing the blessings of God? It's because you're always opening your mouth too soon and you invite the devil in on you prematurely. Learn how to excuse my language. Shut up. You got to learn how to be quiet. Everybody don't need to know you ratchet. Everybody don't need to know you's a liar. <laughs> Come into the church and shut up, let the Lord work on you. Not only that, take your sign down. <laughs> Lord, do you want me to go here? <laughs> Lord, guide me. Listen, take your sign down. If you're a liar, don't come into the church and say, hey, I'm Mr. or Mrs. Liar. Here's my credentials to prove it. I'm going to lie to you. Don't do that. Listen, I preached a sermon about, about, about what if God, see, this is the reason why you got to be careful with people. Because you can't be what's known as, people want you to be transparent. But you got to be careful with transparency because you can't be transparent with everybody. Everybody just can't take the real you. Amen. Amen. I ain't. Everybody can't take the, the real you. You know? And, 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 and I tell the folk, if you ain't said nothing, you a super saint Jesus Jr. So I wonder what would happen if the Lord put a sin detector over the door of the church. And you walked in, beep, 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 beep. You just lied last night. Beep, 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 you was cussing last night. <laughs> beep, 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 you just cussed before you walked in. <laughs> beep, 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 you was drinking. <laughs> hey, just learn how to take your sign down. Be quiet, let the Lord cleanse you from the inside out. <laughs> Trying to have a little fun. <laughs> Everybody ain't got to know everything. Amen. Let the Lord work on you. Yeah, let, let, let the Lord work on you. Now, here's what it is. And, I, and, and I'm almost done, I promise. He took his sign down and he didn't say nothing. Kept his mouth closed. He didn't say nothing. He took his time, sign down. So this text suggests to us today that you have to, one, find God. But not only should you find God, you need to move from finding God to having faith in God. Matthew records for us that the man says, Lord, if you will, can you make me clean? Now, the interesting thing about the text there is that Jesus responds with two words. Listen at what he says. Lord, will you make me clean? Jesus says, I will. Can you clean me? I, 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 I will. Lord, I'm struggling. Can you help me? I will. You got to come to yourself and ask God for help sometime. Yes. You got to recognize that in, in the eyes of God, you are inferior and he's superior. Amen. He holds it all. Lord, I'm not progressing in my life like I should. Can you help me? I hear him say, I will. Be ready for it now. He's saying, I will. See, what I like about God is he's not like man. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I know I'm telling the truth. I thank God he's not like man. See, you got two kind of people. You got, the, you got the people who able to help you. They just don't have it. Then you got the folk uh, uh, who willing to help you, rather, and they're willing to help you, they just don't have it. But then you got the other folk who able to help you, but they just don't care to help you. That's right. That's right. You got people who willing to help you, but they just won't do it. That's right. But then you got folk who willing to, who, who's able to help you, they don't care. <laughs> but listen, here's the thing that I love about God. 
is God is able to help you and he's also willing to help you. That when other people count you out, God counts you in. When, he, when everybody is saying you're going to be a failure, God said, listen, I'm just setting him up. Amen. Listen, that's why the text, that, that's why the Bible says, judge nothing before it's time. Amen. Am I preaching? Let me try to get through with it. I probably won't finish it today. Let me try to get through. This man says, Lord, will you clean me? Jesus says, I will. He's able to help you. The text is also designed to teach us that Jesus not only hears our cries, but he's willing to converse with those who are not worthy to hear his voice. He's willing to converse with those who are not worthy to hear his voice. Jesus stops. The text proves it. Jesus stops to hear the cry of an unclean leper. He stops to hear the cry of an unclean leper. And the same God that stopped and heard the leper's cry, he's still in the building of hearing your cry. He's still in the business of hearing your, your cry. The leper, the unclean leper. See, see, what I also love about the text is that Jesus, when the man came to him and said, will you make me clean? Jesus didn't go, oh, you a leper. Why you didn't holler out? Why you ain't wearing your sign? That ain't what he do. He, Jesus could have revealed who he was. He was, by the law, he was supposed to do two things. Didn't do them. Jesus could have revealed it. Jesus didn't do that. He just told him, I, I will. Now, before the man says, can you make me clean? The text is careful to share with us. This is the first thing he does. He worships Jesus Christ. <laughs> that before he asked the Lord to do anything for him, he worships the Lord. He doesn't wait to worship him after he gets clean. He worships him before the cleansing takes place. He's a leper and he's praising God. He's a leper worshiping God, this is tailored to teach us that before you ask God for anything, you better be willing to worship him. Amen. Have I got some witnesses? Amen. That before you ask God to help you, you ought to be worshiping God. Yes. Listen, stop asking God to pay your bills if you don't want to tell him thank you. Stop asking God to save your family and then you go out here and you don't care nothing about them. You live any kind of lifestyle. You ought to be willing to worship God before asking him for anything. That's what the text is, is tailored to teach us. You got to be willing to worship God. Not only does he worship Christ, but the text suggests to us that he confronts the Christ. He said unto him, can you make me clean? Now, the word clean in the Greek, got to give you something to think about. The word clean. Clean in the Greek is this word called katharizio. Somebody shout katharizio. All right. It's where we get our English word catheter. Am I making sense? It's where we get our English word catheter. In other words, this man came to Jesus and said, Jesus, I need you to catheterize me. <laughs> now, you got to, uh, in order to appreciate that, you got to know what a catheter and how it works. You got to know how it works. Here, here, if you don't know, I'll tell you if you, if you do know, just listen. <laughs> Here's how a catheter works. A catheter has two functions. The first function is to re remove unwanted bodily toxins and waste from your body. That's the first thing it does. But the, the second thing that it does, it restores good things yeah. back into your body. Yeah. So here's what he, the man is really asking Jesus. Lord, can you catheterize me? Can you take out everything that's toxic out of my life? Can you take out everything that's prohibiting me from serving you? Can you take it everything out that's prohibiting me from worshiping you? I need you to please me. Get it here from the inside out. Yeah. 
But the man, I love the text. Listen, I love the text because he says, listen, don't just take from me, but add to me. Listen, don't just take the, the bad things out, but listen, put some good stuff back in. Put the things that I need. Put the fruit of the spirit back in me. Put the Holy Ghost in. Listen, catheterize me. That's what the man's saying. Yeah, I need you to, to catheterize me. So not only does he worship Christ, not only does he confront the Christ, but I also see in the text, and I'm gone, is he receives confidentiality from Christ. Jesus, as I said, could have threw him under the bus. You got to watch folk who you tell all your secrets to. Some people like to hear it so they can use it against you to crush you. Huh. Huh. Listen, I'm not telling you something I don't know. Huh. This is something I'm telling you because I don't live through it. The people I told some things to about my life, they was the same ones that used it to try to destroy my ministry. Huh? But that's not what happens with Jesus. Jesus did not reveal who the man was, but he concealed who the leper was. And in him concealing who he was, he revealed to him who he was. So listen, he concealed the man, but in, his conceal, uh, in, in concealing him, he, Jesus revealed himself to the man. That's what he did. That's a good picture of grace. That's the picture of grace. Aren't you glad that God didn't throw you away? He didn't throw none of us under the bus. Huh. Listen, everybody, I ran into a bunch of folk. And they said, listen, I'm looking for the perfect church. <laughs> I said, you want the perfect church? <laughs> yeah. I said, oh, I, I know what to do. Here's what you do. You go find your building. You take the pastor, the deacons, the members, and you throw them all out on the outside. Make sure ain't nobody in the building. That's the perfect church. <laughs> Listen, what people got to understand, and I hope y'all understand what I'm saying, but this is, this is really the mess hall. <laughs> this is the place where everybody can come with their problems, with their situations, with their disorders, and they not support, they not being judged by God. What God does is he, he conceals them. He loves them. This is the mess hall. <laughs> Yeah, you're looking for the perfect church. Your life ain't even perfect. So listen, it's the picture of grace. God didn't throw you away. He forgives us and he grants us a new mercy every day. So in order for things to change, here's what you got to do. Just to recap, you got to find God. You got to have faith in God. And then you will receive favor of God. I'm gone. This man... This man's contamination does not scare Jesus Christ. Understand that in spite of the man's contamination, Christ is still committed to changing his life. In spite of what's going on in his life, Jesus is still committed to changing his life. The man receives favor of God on three different levels. The first one is, and I promise you I'm trying to get done. The first one is, is he experiences Jesus, the compassionate one. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus in verse three, he touched him. Not only did he experience compassion of Jesus, but he also encountered Jesus, the Christ, for he moves from touching him to talking with him. Right. Am I still here? Yeah. That's beautiful because no matter what shape or condition you are in, yeah. the Lord is still willing to talk That's to you. Right. Despite your failures, despite your faults, Jesus is still willing to have a conversation with you. But not only does he experience Jesus, the compassion and, and, and the Christ, but then he finally gets expunged by Jesus, the cleanser. What you mean by preacher? He teaches him and, and tells him, I'm going to heal you. But before you go back home, there's something I need you to do. I need you to go to the church. Find the priest 
and offer the gift that Moses commanded. Well, but preacher, what's the gift? What was the gift that Moses commanded? If you don't know, I'm going to tell you. Here's what the gift that Moses commanded was. It wasn't for the preacher. It was for God. The gift was a sacrifice. Now, at this time, it's not talking about a sacrifice of tithes. That, that's not what it's talking about. It was not the benevolent offering. It wasn't the building fund. Okay? This was a sin offering. Y'all got me? This was a sin offering for the lepers. And, and, and it was a sin offering for the lepers. And that the individual was to take two birds. He was supposed to take the first bird, kill it, wrap it in cedar wood and scarlet. Then he was to take the blood from the dead bird and put it into a bowl. Then he was to take the live bird, wrap him in scarlet and cedar wood, take the live bird and dip it into the blood of the dead bird. And then he's supposed to raise it up, sprinkle it with water as though it's being cleansed. <laughs> and then after that, he was to take it out to the woods and then release it, which was symbolic for not only God forgiving you and clean, cleansing you, but freeing you from your condition. That's what it was. That's what it was. So I thank God today that God forgives us and he doesn't do it halfway. He doesn't do it part of the way. He does it full. Listen, found out about God is he takes some of our sins and he throws it into the depths of the sea. But then some of y'all sins so bad, the Bible say that he got to take it and put it in a bag <laughs> and sew up the bag. Amen. Either way, I thank God that he don't remember my sins. He takes them and he casts them. Woo! Never to remember them anymore. That whenever you mess up, if you ever mess up, you have an advocate with the Father. When you mess up, I hear Jesus, Lord, that's my blood. Listen, the blood is still working. The same blood that was shed on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. It's the same blood that's still healing. It's still saving. It's still cleansing. Listen, if you don't believe me, try it for yourself. Yes. Have I got some witnesses? Amen. You got to seek God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And may he ever keep you in his care. Very good. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, did anybody receive anything out of this? Hallelujah. I know I did. God's grace is like an ocean with no shore. Think about that. There is not any place you can go, anything that you do, you cannot escape the grace of God. When I was a child, my sister and I went to a neighbor's house. We knew we were doing wrong. We never told our mother and father where we were. We were gone all day. The sun started to set, and we kept thinking about calling them, and we never did. I saw my dad's truck coming down the road, and I thought, oh boy, we're really in trouble now. We're going to really get a whooping. And my dad got out of the truck, he went over and just got our bicycles, put them calmly up in the back of the truck, and he said, are you girls ready to go home? And of course, we jumped up in the truck, and I remember crying all the way home because of the mercy and the grace that my earthly father showed me. And I thought, it's so much like you, God. The grace that you show me, no matter what I've done, where I've been, and I've, when I felt so alone in the world many, many years ago, didn't think very much of myself, 
God sent Christians into my life. And if you're watching this TV now, this is your opportunity. If you have not accepted Christ into your life, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Think of that. You In this world, you serve either the devil or you serve God. There is no in-between. If you're not serving God, you are serving the devil. Why would you want to serve a master who is bent on destroying you? I earnestly pray that you will reach out right now and receive Christ into your life. Repent of your sins. Turn away from your sins. Pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, I need you in my life. I ask you to come into my life and be the Lord of my life. I repent of my sins, and I want you in my life forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. In addition to our postal address, Anchored in Faith Gospel Church has several electronic means to connect with you. Find our TV episodes at youtube.com slash anchored in faith. Visit our website at anchoredinfaith.org. Our phone number, which is area code 319-828-4815. Our email is tv at anchoredinfaith.org and find us on Facebook by typing at AIFGC into the Facebook search box. We are actually a small church. If you call our 828-4815 phone number, leave a short message and make sure to include your phone number so we can call you back since we do not have caller ID. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.